Morning, kiddos. It's Monday, the 21st of August, 2017. Yet another start to another week and a long, long haul up to Christmas Day. Oh, yes. Only four months away. It's not bad, is it? Have you collected presents yet? Well, I'm looking out the window. In the paper this morning, in the Daily Mail this morning, summer returns to Britain today, it says there, as Hurricane Gert... I like that word, Gert. Imagine being Gert. That must be someone's name, is it? Gert. It sounds sounds Norwegian or Swedish, doesn't it? Gert. Hello, what's your name? Gert. <laughs> uh, uh, let's have a look. Hurricane Gert brings the Caribbean air an 82 degrees Fahrenheit heat, making this country hotter than Mexico and Greece. Well, I'm looking at the window. Are they sure? All I can see out there is like dreariness and greyness. Last night, we had a lot of rain again last night on the way home. Did you get it where you were? The garden is looking very green, but not much sunbathing weather. Look, the summer is returning for a brief spell in Britain this week with temperatures... Ah, now it says tomorrow. So why does it say the headline says summer returns to Britain today? A little bit later, the summer is returning for a brief spell in Britain this week with temperatures of up to 82 degrees uh, Fahrenheit tomorrow. Who's doing the editing on this, dear? Uh, is it that bloke? What's his name? George Osborne. Oh, no, he's doing Evening Standard, isn't he, old George Osborne? How can a man have so many jobs and have so much money? It's outrageous. I'm outraged. Hurricane Gert is bringing Caribbean air to the south of England and Welsh Wales. Welsh Wales and dry conditions replacing rain from this afternoon. But, ah, this, there you are, this afternoon. But Scotland and the North East, sorry gang, you will still have floods. Noah's Ark is standing by. The Met Office says the remnants of a 1,000 mile world, world wide girt. Girt. The second Atlantic hurricane is on board with that weather story. Thank you, I'm deleting that. <laughs> It's, been, it's, it's not looking like it's going to be 82 degrees out there today. I'll tell you that. As you notice, my voice is not operating within normal parameters this morning. <coughs> We're lacking volume today. We're absolutely lacking volume. Uh, so, nice night last night at the karaoke, boys and girls. Uh, there was an American lady in there. And uh, uh, I think her husband, who was about 20 foot tall. And where I had the camera, I, I couldn't really get to the camera. I kind of put it on the um, on top of the TV screen. The only thing is, of course, I couldn't adjust it. So we had a very tall person, which was her husband. I assume he's her husband or boyfriend, one of the two. He was tall. So while he was singing, all you could see was his chest. And then was poor little Fidela, who's, I mean, very, very short. And all you could see was the top of her hat while she was singing. I'm having a, a, a few sound issues there. Not... In the venue, but where the sound comes to you watching at the other end. I keep getting it distorted in there, and I thought I'd sorted it out last night. I bought in another mixer, <clears throat> and I actually said the camera is an iPhone. I actually sent the camera, the, 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 the sound to the phone at a very low volume, and I'm still getting a lot of... um. um uh, distortion from from there in particular. It happens sometimes also in Central Station. Uh, a lot of the time it is, is the singer. Now, if you're screaming and shouting into the mic, not necessarily because you know that, OK, you might, like me, may be a voice thrower and you're really good at throwing your voice, which automatically... <clears throat> Uh, means that it's going to come out louder anyway. So really, you've got to keep that turned down at the level. Um, but I think some people over overdrive the microphone. They're like, right, really on top of it like that. Do you see what I mean? Do you see what I mean? And I think it's a little bit like that. I, I, I'm not sure if that's what's going on there. Um, it could be. I've been, I've been desperately trying to think this morning what, what else I could do about it because I'm actually sending a very low signal now to the phone. I mean, it's hardly the first light. If, if you've got like 10 lights, it's only the first light that's flashing and I'm still getting it. Um, <clears throat> I wonder if maybe I should try turning the bass down. I don't know if the uh, if if it could be the bass on there, but I'll try. We're, we're, we'll get to it eventually. All right, so nice night last night. And the American lady, uh, Michelle, she sang Valerie. 
as did another lovely couple in there last night. And she gave me a tip, which was quite nice. Now, the Americans always like to give tips. Um, it's the thing, it's what they do there. If you don't take the tip, and for years, for years and years, now and again, you get an American, and we're not talking like 20 or 30 quid, we're talking a couple of pounds, okay? That's, that's a normal American tip. That's what they do. And for years, I used to refuse these. Oh, no, no, I don't want your money. Oh, please take it. No, I don't want it. No, please, please, I want you to take this. No, honestly, I don't need it. Now, they actually consider that offensive. You've got to take the money because that's what they do there. So lovely uh, lady last night gave me a little tip of a couple of pounds. And See, that's completely normal to them. You know, not like the English. Tight as anything. And similarly, when you go to America... You need to give tips. And when I say tips, we're not talking $20. <clears throat> you know, every time someone does a little thing for you, a couple of dollars in their hand. You know, doorman, holds the door open. Thank you very much. Just, just shove a couple of dollars, which is like about 70 pence. And he goes, oh, thank you very much, and puts it straight in his pocket. That's how it works over there. So for me not to take tips from them when they're here is actually considered offensive. So I have my, my I think it's about £1.70, which I shall be putting into my bank immediately to earn the paltry amount of interest being paid at the moment on banks. <laughs> on people's say, I don't know how pensioners survive. A couple of my friends, are in fact, as, as, as the years are going on, more and more of my friends seem to be pensioners. Isn't that strange? <laughs> but I don't know how they cope, really. Uh, those certainly living off their savings, presumably over the last 10 years now, isn't it? <clears throat> We've had this uh, low interest rates. Presumably, they have to keep dipping into their savings a little bit more and a little bit more. Then it comes down and... You know, I don't know how they cope, really. Uh, but, uh, yes, yeah, so very nice to be uh, tipped last night. Now, next Sunday, being a bank holiday, uh, the karaoke at the Cams and I will be going on until 2 o'clock in the morning. I haven't I've got to design a new poster for that one. All right, so next week, if you're in Camden Town, get there early. We still start at 8 o'clock, OK, for the regulars. Because if you, if you start changing the start time, then that can affect... Weeks ahead, I was like, oh, I wasn't open till 10 o'clock. No, it's open at 8 o'clock. Every Sunday from 8 o'clock next week as a one-off, going right the way through till 2 o'clock in the morning as it's the bank holiday. OK, get there early for that one. Um, <clears throat> let's have a look there. Where's number four? Number four. No cooking video, I'm afraid. Now, you know, I said yesterday I was going to try and do you a cooking video. Well, I did. I did a cooking video. Now, I had my camera set up on a tripod. Now, the tripod doesn't have a mount for the camera. So it's kind of held on there with a couple of elastic bands, which do the job. But the elastic bands were covering the little numbers at the top. So when you hit record, the numbers start counting out, you know, one second, two seconds, three seconds, and microseconds afterwards, or whatever they're called. And uh, the, 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 the rubber band was across the numbers, but I thought, I don't need to see those numbers. You know, I just pushed the button. So I, I'd, done the, I'd done the cooking show um, uh, in about, let's have a look, one, two, three, probably about eight clips altogether. There are eight clips. When I say clips, that's little bits of recording. So I record a bit there, then I might move the camera a little bit and record a bit there, record a bit there, and, and, and a bit like that. So each one is a clip. Then uh, I, I finished my dinner, you know, left it simmer away, went into the living room, started editing three clips missing. So I obviously hadn't pushed the button. There's like a record button. Now it's when it's, let me get this right. When it's recording, it goes red square. When it's not recording, it's red round. OK, and I think I must have confused the two colours or the two shapes because when I got back, three of the clips were missing, which means it hadn't recorded. So no cooking show. I did look at it and I thought, I wonder if I can get away without those three clips. No, because it doesn't make sense. <clears throat> you know, if you're chopping up the carrots and suddenly they're cooked, well, what happened in the middle? Exactly. <laughs> so no cooking video, I'm afraid. I'll try and do another one at some point. Let's say hello to some early people with us this morning uh, before we carry on there, boys and girls. Uh, who's uh, Who was first today? Good morning to Kevin Webster. He gets the first message in today. Good morning, Kevin. Hope you're well. He had about four Facebook profiles at one point. Got very, very confusing, Kevin. 
But we sorted that out last night. I deleted them all and asked him to, to re-add which one he wants. As people on here with like several profiles. Why is Why have you got several profiles, some people? I think some people lose the passwords and things like that and they can't get them back, innit? Uh, morning to the lovely Samantha Howard. Hope you're well there. Sean is there. Good morning, Sean. Is it wet in um, in uh, in um, in Norfolk, Suffolk today? Can't remember where you are now. Norfolk? Is it wet in Norfolk today? He's a milkman, young Sean. Probably just finished work a little while ago. Good morning to Craig. Morning, Craig. Hope you're well this morning. Any more trips to other prides? Craig travels the world and goes to different prides. Ah, oh, lovely Luke Taylor. Good morning, Luke. Looking good from Slim as well. Thank you very much, Luke. We're still on it. I've got about another eight pounds to go. Another way in tomorrow morning. Don't forget, on Tuesday, we generally do... If we do a show, it'll be a late show tomorrow. OK, like as in 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock at night. That's uh, on Tuesdays. Yes, yeah, Slim as well. Carries on, Luke. We must carry on. Yesterday, I had my rice risotto. Although you didn't get the video, don't worry, I still got the meal. <laughs> rice risotto. And I'd, I thought I'd done quite a good video yesterday, only to find out that, um, unfortunately, I hadn't recorded three other clips there. Samantha's done her Christmas shopping. Oh, you can't be serious, Samantha. Really? Where was it? I saw Christmas stuff going out the other. Oh, Sainsbury's home. Not Sainsbury's home, but home base. <coughs> home base. I kid you not. That wasn't this week. Oh, no. You know they have like their summer stuff. Uh, park benches, well, gazebos, that ghastly garden furniture everyone's buying now. Have you seen that? Oh, it's awful. What do they look like? It just it bemuses me how people have wonderful gardens, right? Grass, lawns, plants, roses all over the place. Then they get this ghastly decking stuff, wooden decking. They build over half the garden with this awful wooden stuff. And then, it looks even worse, garden furniture settees and sofas that they sit out in the garden. Oh, it's awful. Have you seen it? What does it look like? Honestly, if you want to sit in the garden, get a deck chair or something like that. Something you can put away at night and then it doesn't spoil the rest of the garden. I think it looks awful, garden furniture. I really do. All right, you may be one of those little benches or something like that out there. But sofas and settees? I mean, why don't you just build an extension and be done with it? Awful. Uh, good morning to what? By the way, what present have you got me so, so far, Samantha? We got a new toy shop in Bracknell. Open, it's open now, actually. Mister Entertainer, which looks interesting. I might go in there and have a little look with my camera. Might take a little bit. Oh, you've got to be careful. There's no children in there. Can you just imagine it? Oh, the mothers. You take pictures of my kids. You, you don't just take pictures of my kids. Call the police. You take pictures of my kids. Pathetic women. Usually great big fat things with prams. You know the sort. It's my right to do anything I want to do. One of those. Awful. The same sort of people that have garden furniture. Dreadful. Dreadful. Morning, Ray Reynolds. Ray Reynolds is with us this morning. Morning, Ray. Uh, Karen Brunton. Morning, Karen. Hope you're well this morning, my darling. Kiss, kiss. Thank you very much. Bradley Watts is all right. Good morning, young Bradley. Lovely to see you. Was it you? Was it you? Yes. Yes, it was you at the karaoke last night. He sang Rabbit. Rabbit, 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 Rabbit. Chaz and Dave. With his pretty little friend. What's his name again? I've forgotten his name now. Oh, God. Ricky! Ricky and Brad, who went out last night as well. After the karaoke, they went out. 11 o'clock, and they went out somewhere else. I can't believe how these people just go on for hours and hours. Good morning to Vectis, who says, You can send me a tip, Chris. £50 will do. Well, what have you done? I don't mind tipping people, but what have you done? Oh, which reminds me, the window bloke hasn't got back to me yet. My, um, <clears throat> must make a little note of that to give him a call after the show. My, uh, one of my front doors, I had, uh, like, it's glass at the top, like, double, gla a double, uh, glazed glass, glass at the top. And at the bottom, there's, like, uh, I don't know what material it is, some, it's like, like a wooden bit, but there's a cat flap in there. Of course, I don't need the cat flap anymore, so I want to have the bottom bit replaced uh, with glass. So I rang them two weeks ago. Honestly, they take forever to do it. Why doesn't anyone ever ring back? Have you noticed that? Companies just don't ring back, do they? Ever. 
So I've got to chase him around today. And if a good job is done, I might give him a tip. Not blooming 50 quid, though. Christ, you must have money to burn, Vectis. Mind you, with all those radio shows you do, you know, you probably get a lot of money for those, don't you? All radio stars are rolling in money. Not as much as the television people like myself, but they don't do too badly, do you, Vectis, eh? Hmm. James says, new picture, the one behind me? Uh, no, it's been up before. I've got a selection of pictures that I try and rotate. I might go and get some more. Those pictures behind me, <clears throat> and I, 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 never, I, I never do pretense or anything like that. Those pictures, not that one. I had that one made for me. Actually, I think my brother... In, oh, that just, just, just um, unfocused then. Just a minute, let me turn that off. I forgot to turn something off. There we go. Done. Though that one behind me was done by my uh, by my brother-in-law actually Martin, and he he hasn't got it anymore. But he used to have this machine that he could make pictures and that, and a great big machine it was. And you put in oh a lot of mucking about, oh god, and then he puts it over a frame and all that business. That is the old Thames Television logo. Uh, the, all the other picture, no one other picture. I've got another one with Big Ben on it. That one I bought off eBay. From I, I just looked on eBay and I bought pictures for sale and it was a Polish artist who had painted this thing and I bought it for about 30 quid. Uh, it was only 30 quid, comes up wrapped in a tube and I took it to the frame as, oh, I get, I put, get it put on a frame, similar to the frame behind me there. It's just a wooden thing there and they clip it on and stretch it. The framing was 120 quid. So I won't be buying another one of those, dear. God's sake. Um, all the other pictures I bought from the range. Do you know the range? It's uh, a shop, and they, they're a little, little bit like an old Woolworths, really. They sell all sorts of stuff in there, and they've got a massive selection of different pictures in there. And um, I've got a little... Uh, actually, the, the pictures I use behind you are dotted all around the house, and I change them around. So that's the picture on the back there. I might get some more, actually. And they're dirt cheap. They're like 10 to 15 quid, usually, those pictures behind me. That's all they are. It's good, isn't it? Good, isn't it? Good morning, sir. And eBay is another good place you can get pictures. <clears throat> and you can get them like that, already stretched on the thing, twenty about 20 quid. They're really cheap. Don't go buying just the the uh, the canvas bit and taking it to a framer, because that's going to cost you 100 quid like that other one did me. <laughs> morning to the lovely Mark Cording. Good morning, Mark. We missed you last night, Mark. It was a busy night last night. God hundreds of new faces in there now. It's I'm so pleased that Camden one is doing well. Uh, in particular, because I like the manager. I worked with him um, in Belushi's many years ago. His name's Mark in Belushi's in Hammersmith and Belushi's in, um, <clears throat> in Fulham. And he's a lovely, lovely chap to work with. He really is. So I'm very pleased that's working. Uh, incidentally, talking Belushi's, uh, Mark, you might be interested to know, uh, they've, they've got a refit, the one in London Bridge. And I popped them through an email to see if they might be interested having a second karaoke because they used to have two there. I said, I know you've got a karaoke on Monday, which is all up and running, which is good. Would you be interested in having a karaoke another day during the week, possibly uh, a Wednesday or a Thursday hosted by me? Uh, but they said, no, they only wanted one a week. So that, that's not going to happen, unfortunately. All right, Mark. Uh, good morning to the lovely Shania on the Isle of Wight. There's a daughter of Vectis. Morning, Shania. Gavin Matthews is there. Hello to lovely Diane. Oh, you're a bit late with your message this morning, Diane. You're not first. You're way back in the queue. As President Omar Obama says, if you leave the European Union, you will be going to the back of the queue. How dare you? You really annoyed us saying that. I reckon a lot of people voted for Brexit because of what President Obama said. How dare you tell us how to vote and how not to vote? How dare anyone tell us how to vote and not to vote? What a cheat. I did quite like President Obama. All the way until he said that. And I thought, you mind your own blooming business. Cheek of it. Cheek of it. Uh, Samantha says your Christmas present is in the post. Now, Samantha, I don't like liars, darling. I don't like liars. You haven't got my address. How can it possibly be in the post? You naughty girl. Naughty girl. I don't have a postal address, I'm afraid, for you to send anything to at all. No, I haven't got a postal address to send anything to. Used to have a post office box. And it was fairly reasonable. It cost about 60 quid a year to have this post office box. And I think I had it for about three years. And then in one year, 
it went up from 60 quid to about 140. And I thought, you must be joking. It's outrageous. So no, I haven't got a post office box anymore, all right? Good morning to Titania Ruzo Garcia. Says, hiya, you have so much energy in the morning. Oh, you've got to have energy in the morning, Titania. I love your name, Tatiana. Tatia, Tatiana, isn't it? Tatiana, I beg your pardon. I love your name, Tatiana. What a beautiful name that is. Really is. Uh, Vectis says, I never say how much I earn. It's vulgar. I'm sure it is, Vectis. Vectis, ah, as you're in the business, you may be interested in this. And you can tell me how this happened. I've got an idea how it happened. My blue bin has got a massive crack appeared in the bottom. Now, I reckon... <clears throat> One of the, um, now you're not known as bin man, are you? What what are you called? What is the crack title? Is it like a, a refuse disposal operative or something like that? Vectis is a bin man, but we're about to find out the correct title for bins. Phone line open if you want to call in at any point, boys and girls now, okay? 0208144 is my local London number, 02081443477. If you've got Skype, you can Skype in as well. My Skype in is United Kingdom Talk. Right, um, so Vol uh, Vectis, what is the correct term for bin man? <coughs> anyway, my blue bin has, dis uh, ha has developed a massive crack in the bottom, which has kind of opened up a bit as well. And things fall through it. So I rang up the council, Bracknell Forest Council last week. And um, they said, no problem at all, we'll replace that, just leave it outside. So it's outside today. They said it was going to be outside today, which is interesting because it's the blue bin that's damaged. Now, today, they collect the green, bin, green bins. So one week they collect the green bins, which is household rubbish, you know, dust, dust, rubbish like that, wrappers, things like that. And on the other week... They collect the recyclable balls, like metal tins and cardboard and newspapers, plastic things, and the garden refuse. Now, this week, it's the green bin. So why have they told me to leave the blue bin out this week? Doesn't have a lorry have to come around. I don't know how that works. It's very strange and mysterious. It really is. Don't know how that is. Uh, <clears throat> Mark was in Eastbourne for the air show. Oh, that's great. I haven't been to an air show for years, um, Mark. Uh, where my sister lives in Lincolnshire, they had the Lancashire bomber up there and all sorts of RAF stuff. And uh, indeed, when I stay at the caravan park Tattershaw Lakes, the uh, fighter jets practice in the skies above. And the noise, it's so loud. Funnily enough, it's not offensive noise. When you see those planes suddenly shoot, they're not like an air chain, you know, like an airliner, like the uh, British Airways plane, you know, as it's going up, like that. It's so slow, isn't it? So it looks, you think it's doing about 10 mile an hour. Be quicker to walk to America. The Americans are getting very excited at the moment. I'll come to that in a minute. Very exciting in America. No, so the, the old BA ones, are like that. These fighter decks are like whoosh like that. And the noise that comes from them. You'd love it, Mark. You'd love it. Diane says, I said hi earlier, but you missed it. Oh, did you? Did you? Let me go down to the bottom again. Where are you then? No, it starts off with Kevin. Kevin's the first one I've got there. Unless, unless it's disappeared at the bottom somewhere. Maybe you can, maybe it only holds so many. Sorry if it does, Diane. Sorry if I missed you, Diane. You're very important, love. Very important. Um, Vectis, your wheelie bin must have fell off the truck. That's what I thought. They've dropped it, haven't they? They've dropped it and no one's taken the blame. Blooming cheek. What is your correct title, please, Vectis? Bin man. Is it refuse operative operator or something like that? Huh? What is it? <laughs> so that's why there's no cooking video, I'm afraid. That all went a bit wrong. I find myself now... <clears throat> On the way to and from work, listening to a lot of classical music. Now, this has only started happening in the last couple of weeks. I don't know why. You know, I went to that classical concert last August, uh, 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 last week as well. But a couple of weeks before that, I've started listening to classical music in the car. Um, it started with classic FM. I quite like the way they do that. Although some, the, the, there's, some of the voices on that are so boring. 
those those presenters on there. And she keeps this. I don't know what her name is. She keeps saying the same words. Oh, that's a gorgeous piece, isn't it? You're listening to classic radio. And I'm, I'm, I'm almost falling asleep. It's a good job for the music because I've been falling asleep listening to her blooming voice. Christ's sake, woman, have a little bit of life in yourself. Like this program. Lively and fun. That's what it is. Maybe I'm a little bit too much for some of you first thing in the morning, am I? Is it too loud and happy? Is that what it is? But you listen to this woman on Classic FM. She's on late at night and she has got the most boring voice ever. And you're listening to Classic FM. What a gorgeous piece that was by BZ. And we'll be having a little bit more from BZ later on in this evening. And for our all-night concert, which starts this morning at one o'clock, we have a wonderful choice of music for you with Mozart and the Piano Concerto. You're listening to Classic FM. I'm like, Shut up, woman! Is she alive or what? Is it a robot speaking? There's probably no one even there. They are called voice links or, or voice tracking. <clears throat> now, a lot of radio stations do that. You think you're listening to some bloke or some woman sitting there playing songs and sitting there, you know, while she's talking to you. Half the time, there's no one there. What they do is they get a little script through the post. OK, then they sit there with a, with their script saying, yep, you've been listening to Abba on Dancing Queen here on 210 FM, a better music mix. And there's no one there. It's all little bits of recordings. Boring. Not like the old pirate ships. Aye, aye, my gym lad. Pirate radio was fantastic. Proper personalities like the great Tony Blackburn. We bow down in his holy name. Dave Lee Travis. We bow down in his holy name. Jimmy's. No, maybe not. Uh, yes, but they had personalities who entertained you. Who was the really outrageous gay one in the 70s? Uh, um, no, his name's gone. Curly hair. Capital Radio, he was great. Very, very funny. Very, very funny and over the top. Oh, he was really good. He was really good. Uh, Bradley says, oh, the manager said the Camden says he was acting a bit gay tonight. I'll stop that now. <laughs> you know the story of that, don't you? I had a complaint last week. You know that story, don't you? Oh, yes. Uh, uh, a quiz. I do a quiz night at the King's Head Theatre Bar. And uh, the complaint, <laughs> the complaint was that I was a bit too gay doing the quiz. That was the complaint. Now, the King's Head Theatre Bar have a lot of gay productions in the theatre. Full frontal nudity, yes. And a lot of gay customers. And this bloke says the bloke who does the quiz is a bit too gay. Oh, please do me a favour. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Uh, let's have a look. Vector says Dustman. Can it be dealing with all those stupid titles? Yeah, Dustman. Bin Man Dustman. That's all right, isn't it? That's all right. They do come out with some very, very strange titles. Often I hear people's titles and I wonder how they fit them all on the page. Tatania says, Chris, are you one of those people that gets up at 5.45 on a Saturday morning and play music as they put the kettle on? I cannot lie to you. No. Oh, there's, oh, there's someone at my front door. Just a moment. I'll have to come back. Wait there a minute. Oh, this is exciting. That's my window cleaner who's just arrived. Mark the window cleaner. He'll make, a, he'll make an appearance in a minute. He's quite nice, you know. He is quite nice. Him and his little friend. Oh, I'm done in now. Done in. Uh, <clears throat> let's have a look. No, to, to be honest, Tatiana, I am uh, very quiet in the morning. 
when I've just got up out of bed, I do, um, uh, first thing I do is do my cup of tea and I cannot talk to anyone before I've had my tea in the morning. That's absolutely true, that is. What about you? Are you like that? There's no music on in the morning. It's only when I go to work, I put a bit of classical music on. And I've started downloading um, classical tunes as well on my iPhone. Classical music. Um, let's have a look. What have we got here? Uh, there we are. Albums. There we are. Look. Uh, Foray Requiem. Saint Sens. The King's Choir. Chopin Nocturnes. Mozart Requiem, King of Kings. Oh, here's a good one for you to start on if you want to get into classical. The 50 greatest, hang on, what's it called? The 50 greatest pieces of classical music. Now, you'd know all those. You will have heard them on the telly, in films, on the radio, something like that, you see. So that would be a good one for you to start on, classical stuff like that, if you want to get into it. But, um, yeah, I find it very relaxing listening to that on the way home. There's no bang, bang, bang as I'm sitting here on the motorway doing about 55, 60 mile an hour. Although I went mad yesterday. I did 70 mile an hour on the way home last night. I was a little bit tired. But it makes no difference at all to the... You get about in about another three minutes earlier. Dear me. Vector says that was the best 60 seconds of your show ever. What the... What the um. <laughs> the silence, did you? Breaking the silence. Anyone else into classical music? <clears throat> you may know that I've been working on a new music and chat show that I'd like to do once a week uh, on Upload Radio. And I thought of, it'll only be an hour long, once a week, an hour long. And the music um, I will play will be across everything. I mean, every, every music you could possibly think of that I personally like. You know, we're not doing requests. Not doing requests. It'll be the music I like, OK? And three features will be in this show I have identified so far. We're going to have the Manilo... Uh, the, the Manilo Magic, which will be a Manilo record every show. There will be the Mirable Moment, which will be like a slow, loving, ballad-type song all the time, uh, every show. And a classical piece as well on every show. So that's that's coming up um, soon when I get and get around to doing it. Is that you, Mark? Yeah. Come and say hello. Or are you shy? No. Are you shy? Come and say hello to the middle. It's my window cleaner. Down Good there, morning. down there. Look at him. Oh, look, there, look at there, his there. muscles. <laughs> look at his muscles. Nice and brown after a nice holiday in the sunshine. He's unfortunately is married and that has always disappointed me quite a lot, as you well know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look, you got love arts. You got love arts coming across there. <laughs> Dear me. So he's been doing my windows for a few years, haven't you, eh? Just a few. Just eh? a few. What time do you get up in the morning to do your window cleaning? Seven. Get up with the children. Seven o'clock in the morning. Oh, that's not too early. It's not though, too is bad. It? It's not too no, bad. earliest I get up is on a Sunday. About, that's about half past seven on a Sunday. No, you used to go to bed at half past seven, Chris. Not oh, that was well, you, you did as well, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, we were Mark, the days. Mark and I, we used to go to the same club, although I didn't know you in there. Um, trade, it was. Oh, it's Heidi in Ells Court. Heidi, uh, I've, uh, let's take that call. Let's take a call. Let's say hello. Good morning, Heidi. Morning, Mark. Morning, Good how morning. are you? I'm all right, love. How are you? Oh, listen, you, you've attracted the women. Oh, no, to... oh morning. It. Did you hear that? It. Morning, Mark. I oh, will carry on then. <laughs> Here you are. Take the seat. No, please take the seat. You know, I'll go and do something else. <laughs> That's it. Go, go, go. Me. Dear me. Are we all good? <laughs> what do you want to say, Heidi? I've got a bone to with you. What's that? How in the hell can you be too gay? How can I be too gay? I had a complaint. Oh, yeah? At the quiz night last week, that I was too gay. Oh, right, King's okay. Head Theatre Bar, so it's a theatre so, bar. Seriously? Loads of gay oh, productions well, in the theatre next door. Like, some happens. of them full front on all that business. Right. Um, 60% of the customers in there are all puffs. Yeah. Right? And the complaint was about me for doing the quiz too gay. <laughs> that, is that is true, Heidi. <clears throat> Do you know what, love? I, I, I even... It took all I had not to go down to the bar the next day and say, listen, if he's got a problem with it, then he, what's he doing there? <laughs> no, no, it's not funny, Chris. Yeah? It is, but it is funny, Heidi. you got to have right? a sense of humour about these things. It is funny. 
Because if he said that to me, I'd just laugh in his face. He's he's telling you not to be you. No, the manager didn't tell me that. The manager told me and then burst into fits of laughter. I said, is this a joke? He said, no, the bloke was quite serious. (laughs) But that's not funny. It is funny. funny. Well, you haven't got a sense of humour then, have you? you got well, to laugh at life, love. You just because someone, oh, so sure. If someone doesn't like you being you, then don't go in the bar. Then. Exactly, and that's what I would have said to him. I said, well, don't come then. No, there's Can too I much mean? of this too much of this pussy footing around, worrying I about know. offending people all the time. Don't come. I'm, what do you mean, don't I come? Know. Well, don't come it's if you don't, don't like it. it. Don't come. Yeah, exactly. Simple. Exactly. Well, if, if, if you're moaning, that... Um, <clears throat> TV programs on. Yeah, oh yeah, it. yeah, yeah. Do you want Mark you know to come? Mean? Do you want Mark to come round and clean your windows, Heidi? No, I think he's a bit far from me. And, they, and anyway, I'm four floors up, love. Well, he do, he's got ladder, haven't you? Yeah, we've, what's we the, have ladders. That's what's right. the, do you do those office blocks? Yeah, we do office blocks, yeah. Oh, my God, how do you do that? Oh, what, hanging from one of those things? Oh, no, back in the days I used to, when I used to work in Bromley Cleaning Company, back in the days, but no... All houses now. I'm oh, I couldn't be having any of that. Anyway. Couldn't be having any of that. You do realise something, don't you, Chris? What? You do realise that your P mark to just stand there. And what? Your P mark just to stand oh, no. there. I well, it, 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 it put another five on the bill. Don't worry about that. <laughs> He's very tight. <laughs> Lovely well, to talk to you, Heidi, you. darling. All right, my love? <clears throat> Have a good day. Oh, he's off now. <laughs> Bye-bye, my love. I've made him go work. <laughs> <laughs> See you, Heidi. Bye-bye, darling. There we are. Heidi calling in from Mel's Court. She's lovely, she is, when she calls in. She really is. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, Titania says, I'm very grumpy in the morning. I'm a coffee person. No music, no talking, no eye contact. You're exactly the same as me first thing in the morning. That is true, first thing in the morning. I'm exactly the same as that. You can't talk to me. When I've come up here to talk to you, I've been up about 45 minutes. <coughs> That's all it takes, 45 minutes for me to get going. Um, good morning to Ray Belasco. Have you got a day off today? Ray works in the uh, bread and cakes counters in Queen, uh, uh, Morrison's Queensbury, don't you? Um, let me see. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Everyone's doing... Doing Copa Gabbana this morning. Oh, I see what you're doing. Her name was Lola. So that's going to be the music and chat show, okay? Every morning, uh, once it'll only be once a week, we'll have a, a Manilow moment, a Mirabal moment, which will be like a ballad, and a classical piece as well. A classical, classical, what can we call that? A classical, classical classic. Classical classic, that's it. Classic. And that hopefully will be starting soon. I've still got a little bit of preparation doing for that, a few little jingos, because you have to have jingles and things like that, which I've got. It's sorting them out and getting them all together. I might have to take a short break from my talk shows of, of a couple of mornings just to get that sort of sorted out and ready, because I'm uh, 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 needing a little bit of time to work on that. Good morning to Adam the Plumber, who joins us this morning. Oh, good morning, Adam. Hope you had a nice time last night. Adam's on the Slimming World as well. He's done uh, even more than me, so he's got a weigh-in on uh, Wednesday. Uh, good morning to Guillermo. Good morning, sir. I hope you're well. Are you, uh, now, where are you? Are you in the US? I think you're in the US, are you? Uh, Ray says, how do you relax? Well, uh, I watch the telly to relax. I watch the telly and I've started reading and going. I had a book open last night for about uh, 20 minutes before I went to bed. Yeah, so there we are. Uh, Bradley, Mark, someone sent you a love art here. Oh, yeah? Yeah, don't take any notice. He's been around the block a little bit, though. That's the only thing. <laughs> Leave him alone. He's married with a family. Leave him alone, Brad. Titania says, you sound like the guy who plays Taken. What's Taken? Is that a TV show, Taken? Is it one of those Netflix things? Something like that. And, um... Oh, here's a good one. Bradley says I look better than Mark. Thanks very much, Brad. Appreciate that. (laughs) Now, I mentioned to you that the Americans are getting very excited at the moment uh, because they've got this um, eclipse happening there. Now, I'm not sure, sure what time of the day it is, but in the sun this morning... Millions of Americans have swarmed on small towns in preparation for today's total eclipse of the sun. And Brits could get a glimpse too. Are you excited? 
Not really. I mean, I don't understand why anyone can get excited. Funnily enough, we had an eclipse here, 1999, and I always remember it had gone, it started going a little bit dim outside, and I come out the house, and uh, my friend down the end, Babe Station Pearl, who was, actually, it's Mark's mum, Mark's mum, Babe Station Pearl, who lives down the end. She was out as well. I said, all right, Pearl. And uh, I was on my own, and I went up and stood uh, next to her fence, and we watched the eclipse happen. <clears throat> and actually, when it starts, you don't really notice it go dark until the whole thing is suddenly covered. And then there's like this dark ear. And it's a weird light. It's like a green light. But that's all it is. You know, the moon moves in front of the sun. That's going to happen. We're not suddenly going to be attacked by aliens. Creatures are not suddenly going to rise out of graves and start eating each other. There's not going to be any of that. Anyway, the Americans are getting very excited because they got a big one today. Uh, large parts of America will experience a total solar eclipse for the first time in nearly a century with festivals taking place to celebrate the large phenomenon. Oh, we've got Vectis calling in on the Isle of Wight. Just a moment. Good morning, young Vectis. How are you today? <clears throat> I'm very well, thank you. I've, I've got some... The Isle of Wight's... News. Famous from your, ro from your roving reporter. Oh yes, for United Kingdom talk on the Isle of Wight. Do you want it? Yes, please. You're sat down, aren't you? Because you're going to get just really excited. Just a minute. I'm nearly sat down. Nearly sat down. Right. I'm just getting. I'll, 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 I can wait. It's all right. I'm falling over it. Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. Let me sort this out. Right. That's it. Go. Right. You sat down. You ready for it? Yeah. At 10 o'clock, which was what? Oh, I got about a quarter of an hour ago, 20 minutes ago. Yes. We had a brand new superstore open on the Isle of Wight. You never guess which one it was. Oh, it's got to be a Waitrose. No. Asda. Yay. An Asda on the Isle of Wight. Oh, well, that's all right, isn't it? Yeah. What, so, yeah I, just, so, I just thought you might disagree because I, I know you don't, you know. No. You, Asda's you, good. You lower yourself if Asda's you go anywhere good. other than Waitrose, you know. I, li I like Waitrose. Uh, second. On my list of preferred shops is Asda. Oh, there you go. Then, if you come then on Morrison's. Holiday there, here on the island, you, you'll because there's a, a Waitrose in East Cows, and now there's a Asda in Newport. Of you got a Waitrose there playing. as well on East Cows. Is it a large one or a small one? It must be a large one, is it? Um, reasonable. I'd say mid size. It's, it's, it's not sort of like you know the big sort of Tesco's extras you get and what have you. But it, it's not. It's not a convenience store. You know, it's a oh, right. step up from that. So no, yeah, it's, it's I'd say it's medium. So that and that's all, large. You you've just got Asda and Waitrose. Is that it, or have you got a Tesco's? Oh you? no, no, blimey, we've got more. We've got Tesco's, Morrison's, uh, Co-op, Sainsbury's. Um, uh, you, you've got you've, you've got to sort of think. Really, I think there's something about 120,000 households on the island. So oh right, yeah. The obviously, the population's a lot higher than that because obviously you have more than one person per house. Yeah, but yeah. nevertheless, because Asda's open, that doesn't mean to say that there's another 50,000 people to feed, does it? It just means that they go from where they've been shopping to as Oh, that's right. It, it will affect the others because it's such a small island. You haven't got any of the um, the cheap ones on there, have you? Audi or oh, Lidl? Oh, I forgot those, yeah. yeah oh, you've got, got Audi some. and Lidl? Um, what have we got? we got uh, <clears throat> Audi, which I normally shop at, actually. It's about six miles away from me. Uh, I mean, and we've got it... um, a couple of Lidl's. It is, dirt, it is dirt cheap in Audi, isn't it? I go in there um, for certain things, actually. Uh, I, I tend not to buy the fruit and veg in there. I find it don't last very long. Mm. I don't know why that yeah. is. I don't know mm. if they store it any differently, but the, the fruit and veg certainly don't last as long. Um, but you know those, that, like, yogurts? I buy these big fat-free yogurt things. In there, they're 59 pence. In the other supermarkets, they're 99. And, you know, you might say, oh, well, that's only like 45 pence or whatever it is. Yeah, oh, well, but up. then you buy two of them or it's a pound, you know, and add other things on. And you, you do save quite a lot of money going in somewhere like Audi or somewhere like that, don't you? Yeah, every little help. <coughs> oh, no, that's the other place, isn't it? <laughs> every little help. Is that, which one is that? Uh, Tesco's, Tesco's, isn't it? <laughs> Tesco's, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. yeah oh, we... No, so, so, yeah, it's quite exciting. Are you, are you going... going... Are you going down for opening offers, are you? Uh, probably going there somewhere this week. I'm desperate for fuel, actually, and they sell dirt cheap petrol. Well. Oh, got a petrol well. if, but, it, yeah, but, if you've but got... I think it might be a bit busy today. I'll, I'll go in there somewhere this week, but I think it might be a bit manic today. I if you've got an Asda close by, it will affect all the petrol garages in the area. They are the cheapest petrol, Asda, out of everyone, and they have been for years. Yeah, 
Yeah. I was thinking, because someone at our radio station has, um, has just got a job there, and I was saying to him. Yes. So, I mean, I think, there again, I think it's as there's like, obviously, I haven't been there yet, but it's a fairly big size. It would be right. the sort of standard size sort of store that they build. Can yeah. you imagine the amount of stock? It must take to stop one of those for nothing. Because, I mean, it's a brand new building, isn't it? Oh, yeah, so, yeah. So yeah. when they put all the shelving up, there wasn't one can of baked beans, there wasn't <laughs> one chicken breast, wasn't there wasn't cash. nothing there, was it? Can you, sure. uh, perhaps it's just my it's weird like, mind, but no, these things pop into my mind. Can you imagine the amount of arsenic loads of stuff? I've just, that can I just, just, look, I've just handed him a pound... Look, yeah, look at that, look at that. Look at that muscle. Hey. I've just handed him a pound tip, I'll have you know. Yeah. A pound. a pound! I've gone mad! Well, steady on, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> you need to lie down. <laughs> Bye, all. Have a good I'll day. See you later, see. mate. All right. Tell her. Take care. You just close the door after you, Mark. Yeah. Thanks, mate. Right. Sorry I haven't had time to talk to you today. No, that's all right, buddy. Yeah. Hey, uh, he was he was quick. You sure he's done a good enough job? He's he really does a fighting. very good job. Yeah, he does my solar panels as well. Um, uh, usually I have them done just before we come into sort of spring, uh, just after spring. Because if you do them before that, the trouble is you get the um. When when all the flowers burst, all the pollen blows onto the solar panels, and it's yellow, and that's all sticky and difficult. Yeah. You know, it, it it sticks to the blooming panels. Don't blow off. So I usually wait until that's happened, no, and then I get off. yeah. Then I get those them. beans you have for breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> And you then want I, a bottle. you want a bottle that you can run your natural gas. <laughs> I get them done just before um. <clears throat> uh, just before, uh, just after all the all the uh, flowers, and you can see it. You can actually see it when all the panels have gone yellow. That's when uh, Mark does them, so he gets it all yeah, off so again. It reduces their efficiency, I guess. Uh, he's a love, a lovely family. They are really nice. There's there's him. There's it's only him that I see now, really. But I think he had he no him and his brother Dell. Uh, and they had another brother who's what moved, who's married and lives in Portugal now. Oh, right. um, and a daughter as well, and sh I think she's living back with her mum now. The, I think the marry, marriage didn't quite work out, so I think she's back with her mum now. And there's Babe Station Pearl. Uh, <laughs> we, we call her Babe Station Pearl. Pearl's great. Oh, she's fantastic. We, you can always have a laugh with Pearl, and she's oh, a, right. she's a great dog lover. She's lost um, lost a couple of dogs since um, uh, since she would be here. Uh, the oh, is someone at the door again? Hang on a minute. Um. It's right, very, right. very busy here today, isn't it? Right. Shall I feel? So there's not any silence. Keep talking, Vectis. All right, well, I'll keep, I'll keep talking. Yeah, you, you, all you viewers and listeners to this could tune in to Vectis Radio on Sundays between 1 o'clock and 4 o'clock and listen to Vectis Humpty on the radio. And if you're in the Isle of Wight area, it seems to be on 104.6. How's that for a free plug? Well, Chris is away, you never know, will he? I don't suppose he watches or listens to his... Uh, repeats that he puts up on Facebook. I might run out of stuff to say here. What's the weather like where you are? It's quite cloudy and grey on the Isle of Wight. Dry, though. And, uh, yes, we've got lots of exciting things happening on the island. Might go to Asda later. Where's he gone? Even I can only talk for so long. Hi. Oh, he's on his way back now. Yeah. Are you still oh, talking? I should take over his show, really, shouldn't I? Well, there was no one there. Figured How strange is that? Oh. Oh, hang on. It's not my doorbell. It's Ronnie's. Oh, God. Oh. Oh yeah, so yeah, it's very clever. This um, this ring. Oh, that ring... thing, yeah, that thing that the app on your phone that you yeah. have the camera on your yeah. Yeah, well, you can give other people your doorbell. Um, oh right, I never realised. Code that. sort of thing, so that oh, when so... someone rings it, it will ring yeah. them as well as me. And uh, oh, I've right. got Ronnie's, and Ronnie's got mine, just in case there's no one there. You see, but yeah, uh, so if you're on first name terms with the Queen, then at Buck House. She, she could add you, and you could see who was ringing her doorbell. There you are. Cool. I'm sure she sits there next to her phone, waiting for another phone call, Vectis. <laughs> sure, sure, she's quite lonely, really. It's quite sad, isn't it? But the Queen... Yeah. Oh, she's got, I, a, she's got a corgi, I suppose. I watched a wonderful programme called uh, The Crown, which is on the Netflix. Um, and it's all about her when she was younger and all that. It's great. There's a new series coming out in November. I'm sure. I'm sure it's going to bankrupt the Netflix. That they've paid out. I think 100 million pounds to make that. 100 million pounds to make a TV show. How's that? Eh? Well, that's nearly as much as the budget for my radio show. But yeah. and, and and the amount of money that you get paid as a bin man. Well, yeah. Well, of course, yeah. It's a very high, very highly skilled profession. That you know. Yeah, it is. It but is. Thank, thankfully, I got a week off from it this week. So. Uh... <laughs> 
so I'm going down to the uh, going down to the Dorset Steam Fair, where they, where they talk like that. They talk oh, even worse wow. than what we do on the Isle of Wight down Dorset Way, never. Do you have so, uh, the steam engines and all that business down there? Do you? Oh yeah, it's, uh, I think it's officially the world's biggest um, coll- temporary collection of um, traction engines, steam engines. They're everything from the old plowing machines to the you know the showman's engines, the things that have got all the yeah. lights that. Uh, and they they they're doing a proper job there as well because they do actually power the uh, merry-go-rounds. Or yeah, Callum, wow. who's eighteen next year, he's actually been going every year of his life. The first time he went, he, was he six likes. Weeks yeah, old. I'd I'd be somewhere like that. I'd like something like that. I tell you what, if I had a big enough garden, you know those little trains that you can ride on. I don't know what they're called. Miniature railways? Are they miniature yeah, railways? Yeah, garden railways. Gar- aren't they, sort of thing. Yeah, but yeah. you can actually sit on them. That's right. Yeah. I'd have one of those. Oh yeah, yes, be, please. That'd be cool, would it? I keep threatening I'll, my I'll mate that I'm gonna. I could do what I could do with one of those with a fly mow on at the moment. My back garden is uh, <laughs> do a bit of a thing. <laughs> I could I could see myself. You know, I could I keep threatening my mate that I'm gonna build one of these uh, between mine and his house and turn <laughs> up. I could give people day trips, couldn't I? Give it people could day the, trips. The Chris Reardon Express that's got a ring to it. <laughs> that has got a ring to it, hasn't it? It has, yeah. The Chris Ridd, I love it. Thank you very yeah, much, Vectors. We will name my railway after that. Well, do you, do you know, because of all these... Um, oh, we don't want to get political on this show. Don't do get political but, on this but, show, but no. Because of the way the railways work now, because right. they're obviously they haven't been nationalised for years, have they? Yeah, no, no. Techni- technically, you could approach, um, presumably, um, I don't know, some government department... And put forward a case for running your your own train, your own railway, from Portsmouth Harbour, say, to Waterloo. And and technically, the operator that's doing it at the moment could do nothing about it. It has to be a pretty strong case. Do, do and you, you think have to I... have a lot of financial backing? Do you so think you, go, you could have you could have the Chris Reardon Express from Portsmouth Harbour to London Waterloo? Well, that's if you could get in it at the moment, which is a bit difficult. Do you think I'd be good at running a railway? Do you think I could oh, do I could something just, like I that? Just, I could just see you being the guard or the ticket collector with your little black hat on. Ah, oh, well, your yes. Ticket we, we'd go back to old fashioned ways. There'd be none of these machines. Oh, no. no. I would allow people on the train and then I would walk up and down with a little machine, tickets, and yeah. I'd, I'd turn a little handle and a ticket would come out. We'd go it's backwards. One of those little paper things. We, yes, we'd, we'd have to go backwards. You Have you ever tried look on eBay for those? They cost an arm and a leg to buy a second hand one of those. A yeah, ticket machine. Yeah, they, they, they all do. There's a lot of, there's a lot of that stuff at the uh, Dorset Steam Fair at the market. A lot Is of, there really? Like, transport memorabilia and what have you. And yeah. And uh, pe- people, what, what's always a good seller for some strange reason, because you know me, I'm a bit of a strange anorak. I'm into bit old vehicles and buses. But what sell a lot is ex London destination blinds. You know the things that are at the front of the bus. Don't you? You yes, yes, I do. Yeah. And um, people were, especially as they've got old houses, they they drop them down on a wall, and you sort of we're well, not use them as wallpaper, but make a feature of them like that, and you and you get all the destinations. Wow. Down there. You yeah. get a good quality one of those. They're worth quite a bit of money. Strangely. I'm with you. Here we are. Hang on a minute. Bus ticket machines. Let's have a look. Oh yeah, no, they great. look they look electronic. That's not the that's not what we want. We want one one with a little handle on the side, don't we? Let me have a look. I'm just having a look on eBay now. Uh, there's one. Oh my god, it's a Gibson. A Gibson, yeah. All right, yeah. A Gibson London bus conductor. That's the one. Ticket machine. That's the one. It's a little round thing with a handle. How much? Go on. Oh, I'm not really into that. I don't know. And Something it comes not... and it comes in a little suitcase. Four hundred and fifty pounds. Uh, yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, I was going to say about five hundred. Yeah. Four hundred and fifty pounds, and you can you can do a buy it now, and it comes with a ticket installed. Oh, it's oh, it looks beautiful. I can well, see myself lot, walking you get up a and lot down. Straight machines like the ones that um, Stan and Arthur used to use on on the buses. That that's um, the type. That's the type, isn't it? You turn yeah, it around. That's right. Yeah. yeah. But, Wonderful. Oh, oh, yeah, it's um, people. With people with like people will buy what they call um, bus stop flags. You know the thing that says a bus stop. Yes. It says, London Transport, and then it gives you all the numbers that stop yes. at that stop. People collect those as well, and I, I just don't get that. I'm, I'm into the sort of hardware, you know, the buses, and I'm sad enough to want to know what transmission it runs with and whether it's a five-cylinder engine or not. But, oh, yeah, people buy bus tickets, bus flags, and you go, you go to any medium to large bus rally, and there's stalls and stalls under gazebos. Have you got a garden? Stuff. Sorry? Have you got a garden? Yes. You need yeah. a bus stop in your garden. Oh, yeah, I must do, man. You I need do, a London bus stop in your garden. Start buying well, one. 
Well, I could, I could do a lawnmower in the garden for that. <laughs> <laughs> Always a bit like that, is it? <laughs> yeah, I'll have to kick Callum out of bed. He's still in bed, bless him. He'll have to, he'll have to go out and do it today. Yeah, so yeah, you yeah. know you know about car engines and all that, do you? Oh, I've got a working knowledge. I say Callum's, Callum's training to be a sort of mechanic now. Oh, right, um, excellent. And, and if I've got something wrong, as long as it's not electronic, if I've got something wrong with the car, I can normally go to a garage and say, look, it's making this noise. Yes. I think it's a UV joint or a CV boot or something. But as for actually picking the tools up and doing it myself, I wouldn't stand a chance. Do you, have you looked at um, hybrid? Because you know my car's a hybrid engine. You looked at that? Yeah, too? that seems yeah. to be the way to go. I know someone on the island who's got a Mitsubishi uh, hybrid. Oh, was that the plug-in had, one? He, yeah, he, well, he's got a petrol. It's got a two-liter petrol engine as well. Right. Think, but since he's he's had it two years, and I think he's only filled it up something silly like about six times. Oh, right. on, Because yeah, he's on got... the island, yeah, it runs almost purely on electric. Right. See, mine's but mine's course... not mine's not plug-in. Mine is mine charges as you brake and slow down that sort of thing. So I've not got a plug-in thing. The one improvement I'd like to see on mine is a bigger battery because I can I can only do about a mile and a half, two miles on the battery, which doesn't sound a lot. Of course, in London, it will almost take you across London two miles. Yeah. You know, yeah. uh, so, so it's I quite. Think a... my, I think my mate's car has got a range. But say, bear in mind, it is a plug-in of about. 32 miles. Oh, well, that, that would I, do, wouldn't it? And I don't suppose he does that in a day, so that's no. why probably in one week he's yeah. probably the, the petrol engine never kicks into life. I yeah, guess, right? I'd like to see my RAV4 with, 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 a, with, with a larger battery in it, something like 10 miles, and that would make a huge difference. Even now, you know, the size of... It's a big car, and I can get 60... 61 miles to the gallon, if I'm careful. Yeah, well, easy. You only, mind you, you only drive at about 10 mile an hour on a motorway. This I'm is true. This is true. More than that. <laughs> you're, you're the type of bloke when, a, when a, I'm driving a truck thundering down the motorway. Not that I do that very much nowadays. It slow me up. And I can just, well, don't just bully going, us. Just, you're don't... just going just too slow to get past. <laughs> don't bully us by coming right up our back passage. Thank you very much. I wouldn't touch your back passage with a barge bolt. Oh, move back a bit. Move back a bit. <laughs> Thank you, Vectis. Anyway, just, before, just before I go, yes, very sir. quickly, I must tell you there's another really exciting piece of information. Um, as people will know, they've heard me a few times, haven't they? I'm, I work for, I say work, voluntarily for Vectis Radio. Very loose, and, uh, very loose. this month, we're having a big erection put on our roof. Mm. I beg your pardon, dear? <laughs> I thought that would stop you. I'm dear. sorry? No, we're having an aerial put on our roof, on the highest point of our roof, so that can talk to the transmitter that we've got way up on the down. Yeah, you've got a link and... transmitter. It's called a link transmitter, dear. Oh, don't split hairs, for heaven's sake. <sighs> um, and, uh, yeah, soon after that, about a month after that, when we've done all our test transmissions, we'll be on 104.6 FM, the best music mix. Oh, you'll be wanting me to come and do a regular show. Yes, you can come and frequent. You can come and frequency modulate with me. You'll be welcome. To I will you. FM with you at any time. Thank you, Vectors. <laughs> All right, Vectors. Are, you. are you left alone to do your show, or or do people say, "Oh, can you do this? Can you do that?" What's What's it like there? Um, no, it's not. It's, it's not too bad. <clears throat> um, we we get a few community sort of things that we um, we announce and what have you. But no, the uh, yes, the program director he, he got the bit between his teeth and has given it. All oh, this has got to be done on FM and what have you. But as long as um, we watch ourselves, because obviously you've got Ofcom snapping at your heels That's right, at yeah, the moment. Yeah. He um, he seems quite relaxed. I, I don't. I don't think it would be a mistake if. Um, we we got to um, what's the word syrupy? You know what I mean? Uh, too, too corporate. So then corporate. You're like the other hundred and one stations are out. Corporate there anyway, is so. the word you're looking for. Corporate. That's right. So I, I, I like our eccentricity, yeah. and I hope that will uh, I hope that will continue. Yeah, I hope so as well. Over. I hope so as well because it, it just takes away all the personality of the station sometimes when this happens. The worst thing that could happen is, would be a big company to buy you up. That could, that's the worst thing that could happen because I don't yeah. listen to any independent local radio, even like that classic FM, the music's all right, but the presenting in between it is always just awful at night time. She's so miserable or, 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 or she's far too laid back to be doing a radio show, yeah, I tell you. You see, I don't even ever record my show, really. I think in all the four years that I've been doing it, I've only ever recorded the show probably a couple of times because... Right. Um, a bit like you, I guess. When I when I go, sometimes I go I go in there with stuff written down in a little notebook, some cheap yeah. thing that Shania bought. Yeah, don't yeah, worry, yeah, yeah, private yeah. joke, yeah. private joke. Um, but but uh, other times I don't. Other times I go in there more or less blind. And and I think if you do the show quite spontaneous, then if you do sit down to record it and you record the links, 
it sounds a bit speed. It, it, perhaps it's just me. No, it's not you. It's not you. I don't. I don't practice this. Look, I've got a few one-liners yeah, written down here. That is all the preparation for my show. And um, on the computer here, I've got loads of news stories standing by for me to come to if I if I dry up with this. That, that's Chris, it. Never. That's it. That's never. it. Never dry up. Never dry up. Now, I'm going to have to let you go because it's nearly... T I'm now 50 minutes late with taking my pills this morning. Oh, right. I'll let you and I don't want to die on air, not if it's not been advertised first, because that's just right, a waste well, of viewers. Well, I don't stop you normally. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Are you suggesting that I die on air? How rude are you? Just uh, going back to that quickly, the um, uh, the solar story this morning. Yeah, the Americans are going to get the uh, solar eclipse today, so they're all camping out in little places. I don't know what time it's happening. Here we go. Oregon uh, is at 6.20 tonight. That's our time, but at like, like 10.20 in the morning. So it's going to be happening between sort of 10.20 in the morning and 2.40 in the afternoon, right the way through from Oregon to um, uh, Georgia. Now, we will see a little bit here as well uh, in London at four minutes past eight, but it'll probably, it'll probably be cloudy. And it's, I mean, you can't... I mean, it's not like you can look up, can you? <laughs> you know, because you'll be blind. For Christ's sake, don't start looking at the sun. So very, very exciting for the Americans today and their great eclipse. Uh, some messages. Heidi says, I'd love to go to the Isle of Wight. Yeah, it's a nice place, Heidi. Nice place. There's lots to do there if you ever want to go. Nice. Very nice place. Uh, Bradley says you could charge for the little train rides. I like the sound of that. Brad, you could come and work on my train as well, dear. You can collect the tickets as well. OK, Brad. Um, Mark loves the Isle of Wight. Shania lives on the Isle of Wight. Well, I'm not surprised. That's the daughter of the chap that you just heard, uh, Vectis. Vectis Humphrey was indeed this morning taking over United Kingdom. Talk. He could be my stand-in presenter if I ever can't do it, couldn't he, really? He's absolutely capable of doing this show. And Mark said he laughed at that big erection on the roof. <laughs> you wouldn't do if it was... Uh, uh, never mind, never mind. Uh, let's do today's birthdays, boys and girls. And I must dash and take my pills. One moment, please. Where are the pills? Oh, there was something else I was going to read you. There was, I've, I've got to read you this. This is a, a status this morning from one of the drag queens. Bag of chips. And she says, I'm suffering from Mancunian illness. Just had a fag outside the travel lodge in nothing but a towel. Men are flocking round like seagulls. <laughs> you think that's funny? Better still, the reply by Kevin DeVolder, who writes, no love, they're actually seagulls. <laughs> nice. I love... I love Facebook statuses. Some of them are so funny. You'll get more reaction from a funny status on Facebook than you will one of those that says, oh, oh, feeling a little bit low today. Just split up with my girlfriend. Or, you know, oh, my um, my buttery gar has just died. Or uh, just had bad news from the doctor. No one wants to read that, do you? God, get on there and do something funny. Then we might be interested. OK, now and again, you get a little bit of bad news. Perhaps someone loving has passed away or something. Yeah, put that up. But don't make every single post a depressing one because people unfollow you. I kid you not. I have unfollowed people on there who are depressing. And there was plenty of them. There's plenty of them. Every post is some disaster that's just happened in their life. We don't want to read about that. We want the happy stuff. Happy and smiling like this. That's what we want. Only three birthdays today for you boys and girls. Happy birthday this morning to the very gorgeous Daniel Snooks. It's his real name, I know. Snooks. <laughs> Sorry, Daniel. <laughs> Can we have a new surname, please? Daniel Snooks today is 33 years old today. Good morning, Daniel, and happy birthday to you, sir, OK? Uh, happy birthday to Rory O'Leary, who is only a young 23 years old today. I work with Rory at the Cherry Tree in Dulwich. Happy birthday, Rory. And Michelle Rose Widrington. It doesn't say your uh, birthday, how old you are today, but happy birthday, darling. Here comes the song. Happy birthday to you, 
Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Daniel, Rory and Michelle. Happy birthday to you. Enjoy your birthdays. Just late in there. Mark is uh, coming to the karaoke tonight. See you later, Mark. Okay. Uh, good morning to Mark Cobain. Are you off today? He does a lot of charity work. Good morning to Mark there as well. That's it for the show today. Uh, don't forget, gang, karaoke is tonight. Uh, it's Monday karaoke tonight at Central Station Bar in Wharfdale Road, King's Cross. Starts at 8 o'clock and finishes at 11.30. Cheap drinks as well. Every Monday night, it's cheap drinks and karaoke from 8 till 11.30 at Central Station Bar in Wharfdale Road, King's Cross. Have a nice Monday. And uh, they do say it's going to be 82 degrees uh, this afternoon. I doubt it very much. I've still got my jacket on and I'm not, sweat I'm not sweating yet. Cheerio. See you soon. Bye-bye.